Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to this 3.0 tutorial. Today we will be covering the new display panels, track views, and reviewing some strategies using the music waveform and the new zooming functionalities. Using these tools will provide the support you need to view your tracks with ease and make accurate audio cuts. All right, let's begin by introducing you to the new display panels that are available in 3.0. You'll notice after opening a project that display panels are present on the right side of your screen. You'll notice a big magnifying glass above the timeline view box. In that timeline view box, you'll see beneath directional D-pad buttons with positive and negative magnifying glasses. Another tiny little magnifying glass right underneath those icons of your tracks, and just below those functions is the project duration box. These display panels are incredibly helpful and are very handy when you're dealing with large projects with multiple tracks. But before jumping into all the individual functions, pan over to the left side of the screen and notice the neon share icon as well. That little smiley icon is ready to share when you are. So. Let's hop into the display panels and their individual functionalities. The biggest takeaway from the display panels is the ability to zoom in and out using these buttons. As you can see, pressing up on the D-pad will zoom into your timeline and pressing down on the D-pad will zoom out of your timeline. But don't be alarmed, your project is not being downsized or altered or anything like that. You're only adjusting the size of the timeline. Also, you'll see as you're zooming in and out that the numbers in the large magnifying glass above the timeline view box will change too. You can increase the timeline four times the size or decrease the timeline view 0.25 times the size. This feature will help you zoom out if you have many clips in your timeline and it'll help you zoom into the timeline if you need to focus into a small portion of your project. If you need to reset the timeline view, press the right analog stick and it will return you to standard view. Another great feature that lies within the display panels is the track view tool. Just below the zooming functionalities, you'll see the track icons. They are labeled 1, 2, and the music note. The same icons are placed next to the tracks on the left side. Before I start using this tool though, Let's add a track to and a music track. I'm going to fill all the three tracks so I can demonstrate how to cycle through all of the track views. So pressing on the left analog stick, we can view the different tracks. Press the left analog stick once and you'll see track one and the music track. Press the left analog again and you'll see track one and track two. Press the left analog stick one more time and you'll have all three tracks stacked on top of each other, giving you a clear view of track positioning. Cycle through the different track views by pressing the left analog stick and you'll be able to see your project even clearer. The last thing for the display panels is the project duration box underneath the timeline view. This will indicate the total duration of your project. The same number is displayed on the right side of your tracks as well. All right, so now that we have a good sense of the display panels and their functionalities, I will show you how to best use the zoom functionalities and track views to your advantage. All right, to start off, let's take a look at your music track. You'll see there is a waveform displayed on your track. This waveform provides a visual for all the audio frequencies that are within your track. So let's zoom in and take an even closer look. All right, so as you can see, this waveform is multicolored. Certain colors represent audio frequencies. High frequency audio is represented by the light colors, such as that light blue there, and low frequency audio is represented by the dark colors, such as that dark blue color. When you need to pinpoint certain audio, zoom in, use that track viewer tool, and it'll give you a good view of where you might need to make adjustments or where to place tracks for timing purposes. Lastly, I will demonstrate how to effectively trim music. Using the split clip tool can be incredibly helpful 
if you have long music tracks. So rather than using the trim tool first, try using the split clip to cut a large chunk, then use the trim tool and fine trimming tools to make an accurate cut. Again, using the waveform while trimming will allow you to recognize your targeted waveform frequency in the track without having to guess where you're making an edit. All right, awesome. And there you have it. Some great tools and new additions to enhance your editing experience in 3.0. I hope this information was useful and helpful, and I hope you'll be able to apply it very soon. Thank you for watching and enjoy the new update.